Hello and welcome to Dr. Doctor. Today we talk about meningitis. Meningitis is a life-threatening condition which affects the protective layer around our brain and spinal cord. This layer is known as the meninges and hence the term meningitis, which means inflammation of the meninges. Meningitis can affect anyone, but babies, children, teenagers and young adults are most susceptible. If left untreated, it can cause sepsis, and you can check out my previous video on sepsis by clicking the link at the top. It can cause brain damage, and it can cause death. And before the advent of antibiotics, bacterial meningitis was uniformly fatal. So how does meningitis occur? It is usually caused by a viral or a bacterial infection. The common organisms are pneumococcus, staphylococcus, haemophilus influenza, and meningococcus. These organisms are commonly spread from person to person and often colonize our skin, our nasal passages, and our respiratory tracts. This on its own does not cause any problems. However, when these organisms spread and cross the barrier between our blood and our brain and involve the meningeal tissues, this is when meningitis can occur. So what are the symptoms of meningitis? The classic triad of symptoms is described as headache, neck stiffness, and fever. And this is due to the meninges which surround our brain and spinal cord becoming inflamed. And this causes meningeal irritation, leading to the stiffness in the neck, the headaches, as well as sensitivity to light and vomiting. Other symptoms include drowsiness, confusion, and sometimes seizures. The characteristic rash which is associated with meningitis is not always present, but this rash classically does not fade when a glass is rolled over it. It is imperative to seek urgent medical help if you are worried about any of these symptoms. Often the classical rash may not appear. The combination of fever and headache should always prompt medical attention. So how is meningitis diagnosed? Based on the above symptoms, hospital admission and investigations are required. In order to confirm the diagnosis, the key investigation is analysis of the fluid around your spinal cord, known as the cerebrospinal fluid, or CSF. And this is obtained by passing a needle between two vertebrae into the space where the CSF can easily be accessed. Before this is done, however, a CT scan of the head is necessary, and this is mainly to ensure that obtaining CSF is safe, as in some situations, this investigation can precipitate a fatal condition known as cerebral herniation. And this is where part of your brain can shift from its normal location into an adjacent space where it should not be located. Once the CSF has been analyzed by the labs and has identified the causative organism, treatments can be tailored towards this. In bacterial meningitis, antibiotic therapy is key. In viral meningitis, however, usually only supportive therapy is needed as the virus is self-limiting and benign in its nature. Intravenous fluids, oxygen, and pain relief are all key aspects to the overall care. If effective treatment is given in a timely manner, a full recovery can be expected. However, long-term problems can result if there are delays. And these include hearing or visual loss, epilepsy, coordination or balance problems, and also memory problems. It is thus important to try and prevent meningitis as much as possible, and hence there are many vaccinations which can help. In the United Kingdom, there are a range of different vaccinations against some of the causative organisms which are offered from the age of eight weeks up until early adult life. And these include meningitis B and C vaccinations, the MMR vaccination, 
and also pneumococcal vaccinations. In summary, meningitis can be fatal and can leave long-term neurological damage if not treated in a timely fashion. It is therefore crucial to recognise the symptoms and also to ensure vaccinations are given to children as per national guidelines. Please help spread this message to help save lives and to increase awareness. I would like to thank everyone who has supported this channel in reaching its first 500 subscribers. If you are new here, please take the time to subscribe as there is lots of new and exciting content on its way. Please continue to leave feedback and I will try and take time to listen and respond to any comments left below.